Hello everybody! Today I'm recreating this layout on the cover of Close to My Heart's catalog. It is packed full of techniques. So this is a long video because it is jam-packed with tips and techniques. Um, I've heard from a lot of you that you struggle with choosing paper, choosing colors. We're going to be walking through choosing the colors to mat your photos, um, doing some techniques to make your papers stand out more. I'm going to touch on clustering and embellishing, um, making those beautiful embellishment clusters that we all love. And I'm going to be creating a companion page. So this will be a double page layout. Now I did pull the photos from this event. If you didn't watch my catalog unboxing or are new here, this is me on the cover, which is super exciting because it's close to my heart's very last catalog. So I printed that photo as well as I have a whole bunch of photos from this same event. So I printed all those and I was thinking I was going to be using those to basically totally recreate this layout. But you know what? I got hung up on the passports back here. Now I am going to be using the Let's Go Anywhere collection, which is great for travel. Um, these photos though, they were about an hour away from me. So I wasn't really traveling. And since they're within the US and I didn't need my passport, it's just a little thing like I just it just bothered me to use a passport paper when I'm not going to, you know, when I'm not traveling out of the country. So I did find some photos that work better with this paper. So these are some photos from my trip to Mexico, that which was um, earlier this month, actually. Um, that I went on with Close to My Heart. I earned the incentive trip and we went to just outside of Cancun, Mexico. Um, this is my friend Chelsea, who many of you probably know who she is. She's a really good friend of mine um, on the creative design team and we had never met in person before. And this was just after getting to our resort. We were dead tired after traveling all day and seeing each other for the very first time and her husband snapped a picture of us. And this is that same, you know, right before we hugged um, when we first saw each other, which was really fun. So I was thinking those could go over here on this left page and notice there's only one photo on this one. I'm gonna add this second photo. And so we're gonna talk about ways to kind of adapt a layout if you see a layout you know, online or one of my layouts or another YouTubers or Instagrammers layouts that you want to copy, but maybe you have a different number of photos. We're going to talk about that. And then over here on the right side of the page, I have this photo of Aaron and Chelsea. And um, Aaron and I, you pro guys probably know who Aaron is as well. We actually had never met in person either, although we are all really, really good friends online. Isn't it amazing how the internet can bring us all together? Um, so I don't have a picture of us when we first laid eyes on each other, but I do have this one. This was kind of like the welcome reception that Close to My Heart put on. And so we all got to chat in person for the first time. And it was just like, you know, chatting online and chatting in our Zooms and Facebook messenger calls and all that we already do. So it, it was kind of like, you know, you couldn't even tell we had never met in person before. And this is from that same night, but with Monica, who is the president of Close to My Heart. And so we got our picture with her as well. So I'm going to use these three on the right hand page. And so we'll talk about how to, you know, create a companion page to go with this one. And then, like I said, we'll talk about ways to incorporate an extra photo into a layout that's already designed. I wanted to show you my inspiration um, for these triangles on the side it actually came from the Make It From Your Heart volume five book. So I've got a six by six square and a five by five square that get cut at a diagonal to make the triangles. This is not going to be the exact match for the other layout, but I'm just going to go by this just to make it a little easier on myself. All right, so I am going to use this same paper pack. This is the Let's Go Anywhere paper pack. And so let's go ahead and pull out what I'm going to need. Now we've got, this is the sticker sheet and they are all, um, if you're not familiar with Close to My Heart stickers, they're a really nice high quality cardstock matte finish sticker. Um, so there are some of those on here, like this one I know is on here. And you know what? 
See, this is why I have trouble following directions. If you know me, I don't, I don't follow directions well. I really think that this would be a good sticker to use on my title page. So this is gonna be the first spread of my layout. And then I actually have these two photos that I'm gonna use on my title page. And um, I think that this adventure is waiting might be good on the title page, but I don't know. The first day, there's still a lot of adventure waiting, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I end up doing. But still, regardless, even if I don't keep it the same, you could keep this the same. I might swap out a picture or a sticker and use something else, but you'll still get the general idea of how to put this layout together. All right, so I know I'm going to need this pattern, and this is a really fun pattern. It's like a city, you know, map kind of look. And it doesn't have any words or anything, so it could be for any type of city. And then the back is actually this one. So I'll cut my six by six and five by five paper from this, and I will have, you know, have plenty left over. See, if you look at this, and even if I just hold it up, you can tell that it's a different angle. This is cut a little bit tighter like this. So my angle is gonna be a little di bit different. And it's okay, you guys. I know that there are a lot of you who really wanna follow directions exactly, and that is totally cool. But I'm here to tell you it's okay if you veer just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we'll put that other one aside. And actually, I can get both sides out of this one sheet of paper, and then I still have the other sheet. And then we've got this um, passport paper. So this is nice because it brings in all of the colors. And I thought that that is gonna work really well. I mean, how perfect is that with all of my photos? We've got the blues, I'm wearing blue here. And then how perfect is it that Monica was wearing blue in this photo here? Aaron's got the red skirt, Chelsea's got the teal. I mean, it's like we did this on purpose, but I promise we didn't. <laughs> So we'll pull out this paper. We're going to need that. And then I'm going to grab some uh, French vanilla because this is not bright white. It is French vanilla. Okay, so this is going to be my base page. But um, I did the launch that Close to My Heart put on when this pack came out. So, um, you know, before Close to My Heart announced they were closing every new catalog that they put out, they do a launch event for Close to My Heart makers where they walk us through the catalog. And it's actually has always been so fun because you get to look at the artwork. So like we saw this actual layup up close and saw the dimension and, you know, they could turn it and we can see all of the little details, which is so, so fun. And the thing about this layout in the real you know, the actual piece, it's actually got a toffee border that goes all the way around. I'm gonna pop that up on the screen here so you can see that, but see the difference how there is that toffee border all the way around. So um, I might do that, I might not, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try it out and see what I think. Um, but this, basically I'm gonna use this it's probably a little bit less than half of the page. And so I'm gonna build my layout on the French vanilla and all of this is stamping. So we're gonna be using some stamps. I'll give you some stamping tips. We've got a little inking around the edge. So I'll give you some tips on how to, you know, how to get all these looks. There's so many fun techniques in here. Um, and then I might bring in some of these Let's Go Anywhere die cuts. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like they were used in here. Maybe maybe one of the black ones. There's these little geo tags. I think that that one was used right here. So um, I might bring in some other ones. Um, we'll see. That might be the only one that was used. But these are fun, and I might bring them in some other areas. This Let's Go, that might actually be good for my title page. So maybe I'll keep the Let's Go, do that on the title page, and I can keep this adventure one here but again we'll just see how it all plays out my photos are a little different my spacing is going to be a little bit different so my goal here is basically to show you how to take something as inspiration i'm going to show you you know the techniques and all of that that they used here so you can learn those but um, how to take an inspiration and tweak it to look to work for your photos and to create a companion page all right, so I've already cut these to six by six and five by five. And then when I cut these in half, I will have half for each side. So I'll just put it in my trimmer here um, so that the points are lined up. 
in the groove there. And I'll put this down and I want to start in a little bit so I can go up and back down. If you were to start above here and go down, since we've got the point there, it'll sometimes it doesn't go through the point very well. So I like to start a little ways down and then go up and back down. And then we will do the same thing for the city street pattern here. So I've gone up a little, I'm going to go down and up. Okay, so now we have our little arrows, triangles, whatever you want to call them. Now I have put that toffee background here just to kind of test it out. And I'm going to cut this paper in a moment. I wanted to kind of walk you through that. So I wanted to see if I like it. Do I want to have it like this? Or do I want to have it like this? Or do I want to have it like this? You know what? I kind of like it like that. I kind of like this going off. And then I'm thinking I might have this white piece go all the way to the edge so that when it's butted up together in the album, if you use a post bound album, then it looks like a cohesive 12 by 24 layout. So I would have about a half inch or quarter, probably quarter inch all the way around. And then let's line this up. If you really wanted to save paper, you could get a little bit out of here. I'm just, I'm not going to worry about that. I actually bought the bulk pack of this paper. So I have so much of that paper. So I will just go ahead and do it like this. So we've got our little triangles there. Now I wanted to also walk you through cutting my photos that I've got down to three by four. And then this one, I actually have a little bit of white at the top. Um, and even a little bit at the bottom, I didn't center it very well. I printed this or I put it in the app print to size and that way I could keep more of the ratio. If I were to stretch this and print it at four by six, it would have cut off a little bit more of us on the sides in order to fill the top and bottom because with digital photos, the aspect ratio is four to three. And so um, in print to size, I went in and just made it a little bit less. So it printed with a little bit of white on top. And then I used another app. I used a couple of different apps. Aaron has done a tutorial on how to use print to size. It's for iPhones only. I've done a tutorial on how to use the pick collage app that I use to do this. You could also do this in print to size, but I just really like the collage app I use. Um, so I will link both of those videos down below. They're both for iPhones, but very, very helpful to print smaller photos. You can even print smaller photos than this as well. So then to trim them after I've printed them, I use one of these trimmers and I brought these both in because I've used them both here on my channel. And I, I plan to do a um, comparison video because I have so many trimmers, you guys. It's ridiculous. There is no such thing as a perfect trimmer. So I keep buying them, hoping like, oh, maybe this one will be the perfect one, but they're not. So this one I like, this is the Fiskars photo trimmer. It's available on Amazon. Um, I will link it below. I'll link everything that I use down below. Um, I like it because it goes all the way to four inches. So with photos, you've got, you know, that, but if you need to, like if you're trimming a four by six and you want to trim like half an inch off, you still can't do that because it only goes to four, but you can still trim it like this and I can still, you know, trim my three inch one. So this is going to be three by four. So I'll trim that. I didn't have it quite perfectly centered. So now I need to trim that extra little itty bitty bit off. So now these are almost three by four. Um, now this this one here, it only goes to three and a half. So I've taken a Sharpie and just marked it at the four. Now this is the Tim Holtz trimmer. I do like this one too. Um, it's got a more sturdy arm. So it's, it just feels more substantial. It feels more um, like just sturdy than this one. But this one also has a guard that you can take out. And so if you're cutting something like really skinny, like it's happened before where I need to cut like um, under a quarter of an inch, 
I can take this off and then I have to hold it in there carefully so that it's all evenly held and do this. This one, this guard does not come off. So you cannot cut less than really half an inch very easily. And then this one just will go right back in like that. So those are kind of my, you know, pros and cons to each of these. Um, now, what if I need to cut this to like five and a half? Let me show you a different trimmer. I use this trimmer quite a bit too. Again, thinking, oh, this is going to be the perfect trimmer. It's going to solve all my problems. It's a little bit bigger. So if I don't need to cut more than four inches, I don't bring this one out. I use these ones primarily for photos and probably 90% of the time one of these will do. This one I use when I need to go up to six like if I'm cutting paper scraps or if I'm cutting photos and say I want to make this a five and a half inch photo, I can bring this down to the five and a half and chop off our feet. Now I'm not going to do that with this one. Um, I might do it with this one. I'm not sure yet because we have so much extra space up here, but I'm going to play with the layout on this side and see how it works out and if it will work with my layout to crop off say half an inch then I will do that and then I'll put this one actually in this way and maybe cut it to five and a half and chop it there and then I know it's at the five and a half. The downfall of this trimmer is um, not only its size, it is smaller than bringing in a 12 inch trimmer which is handy but it's not as handy as these. These are just so easy to have next to you and bring in but it doesn't go, this guard right here doesn't go all the way to the edge. Now these ones do. So the nice thing about that is if you're not necessarily measuring over here and you just want to have like, you just want to know where it's going to come down, you know where it's going to come down because this guard is all the way over. This one, when you have a paper in there or say a photo, you don't see the blade anymore because this, this is covering it. So you don't know, I mean, you can look right here but it's not totally obvious, especially if you have a bigger piece of paper, it's not totally obvious where it's going to be coming down. And it's a little deceiving because you're thinking in your mind that it's going to come down right where this guard is. But there's about an eighth of an inch between the guard and the blade. So that is the reason why this one doesn't get a perfect 10. So again, they each have their own, you know, they're all great trimmers, but they they have their pros and cons. So I just wanted to kind of explain that to you. I forgot to point out that the reason why I use these guillotine type trimmers is because I trim so many scraps and photos and they don't dull. You could definitely use your 12 inch trimmer for this purpose if you just want to have that one trimmer, but these type don't dull. So that's why I turn to these. Now that said, I've already cut those three by fours. I still have this one here. I'm going to go ahead and use this trimmer and I'm just going to look at where the blade's going to be. I can see that right here. I just need to trim this little sliver off, maybe a little bit more than a sliver. And then I have just a, a very small sliver of white down at the bottom. And this is going to be that photo that goes over on the left. I still wanted it to be as tall as I could get it without cutting off too much of the sides. I wanted to keep a little bit more of the sides just so it wasn't cropped in too close to our faces there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. And with this paper, it's directional, right? So you want the passports to be facing the right way. So first thing I'm going to do is cut my little zip strip off here. That is a very cute little zip strip. It's got the little geo tags on there. So we'll move that over. And I am going to cut this. Let me look at my layout. It looks like on here, it's just a little bit past halfway, but we need to take this um, outline into consideration that we're going to have this extra quarter of an inch or so on the side. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball it and say, I'm going to start with five and a half. I can always cut it lower if I want. You know what? In the inspiration, 
it looks like it probably goes almost to here. So our proportions are off because their angle is different here. So I think that's going to make it stick out more here. Plus the um, edge is probably in a little bit more like that, which makes it come in more. Again, I'm not going to worry about getting it absolutely perfect. So our little, our little triangle is not going to come all the way in. It's going to be pointing at us, but it's not going to come in as far. Now, if you wanted to change your angle, you could, if you wanted to come all the way in, I could also move this over a little bit. We're going to have a mat on there too. I'm going to just kind of leave it like this for now. Um, I think that this could kind of overlap. So we have all of these embellishments here and a lot of extra space over here. So I think that this can go here and then we can just kind of either do fewer embellishments or move the embellishments over a little bit. But I do think that this five and a half inches is going to be pretty good. I'm going to just go ahead and keep it like that. And then I'm going to take this French vanilla. We've got a lot hiding under here, so I'm actually going to use that for my mat. So I'm going to do French vanilla mat. Now this one has toffee. I'm going to do French vanilla and then I think toffee also because I have a dark background in the back here and most of the time if I have a dark background especially I like to have a white mat and then probably a colored mat too that helps bring in the colors from the layout. Now if I have a brighter lighter background I may not do the white mat but I still more often than not do a white mat because I feel like it just makes my photos pop that much more. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this to four and a quarter. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to cut half an inch from one side of here, because then that's going to give me my border. And in fact, I think I want more than that. I'm going to do another quarter of an inch. So three quarters, whoops, made it this way, three quarters total. So it's going to be not quite half an inch mat. And I think that's going to look good. So we'll do that. You know what? I kind of think I want, I think I want this going all the way over. I've got these backwards. I just realized. <laughs> Again, you can do whatever you want, but I think that the blue stands out better against this background than the green. You guys were probably yelling at me from the screen. You've got it backwards. We're going to talk about the color that I'm going to use as my second mat here. Now, I'm going to have some stamping. So we've got this little cute little airplane stamp in the background. We're going to do that. So we're going to have just a little bit more toffee in the background. We've got this toffee border all the way around, but the toffee to me, it doesn't, I'm not sure it's going to do anything for me as a mat. So let's just hold up. You know, the nails look pretty, but the reason why I don't have my nails done most of the time is because it really makes it hard to craft. <laughs> so hard to pick things up. Okay, so let me just actually let me hold it up this way. Just so you can see. We've got the repetition of this here if we do our mat like this. And that is good. But to me, it doesn't do anything for this photo. It doesn't help it pop. It just kind of makes it look blah. To me, I'm I'm kind of leaning toward this or maybe even the red because we've got more red over on this side and whatever I map my photos in over here, I want to do over here as well. So I might even lean toward red, even though there's no red really in this photo. There's a little bit of red in this um, flower back here. There's a little bit of red in these flowers, these same flowers here. Um, but what that's going to do, since there's no red in these photos, it's going to make the photos pop even more because 
it's up against something that's so contrasting. Does that make sense? So, and then it's gonna tie, it's gonna be all tied in still because we've got the red in the paper and we've got all this red over here. So let's go ahead and grab some scarlet and see how that looks. So here's the scarlet and I might even turn it over to the light side. Let's compare them. So there is the light side of Scarlet. That's looking a little bit pinky. Maybe I wanna stick with there. Now it is a very strong color. So I think what I might do is do a really skinny border, like less than I have for the white. So it's gonna be really skinny. So I'm still gonna get that pop, but it's not gonna be as overwhelming. And then let's try it on this one. I'm hoping you guys can see what I mean. Um, did you see how the toffee background, especially since this is almost like a toffee color too, it just doesn't do anything for me. I really like the red. Now let's bring this mat over here just for fun, just to see how that's going to look with these photos as well. And I do like that. Now it does really draw your eye to Erin's skirt, which is beautiful. <laughs> so it's really pretty. Let me just try one more thing. I'm thinking that this color might look pretty. We got a lot of blue in my shirt over here. What if we use this? Let me grab a bigger piece. All right, so here's a bigger piece of that. I really like that actually as a mat for this photo. Let's try it over here. Let's bring this mat back over here and this photo here. You know what? <laughs> I think I liked the red better here. I might do some mixing and matching of mats. Now that I like. A little pop of red. We're going to triple mat this one, guys. A little pop of red. This is our feature photo here. A little pop of red and then bring this in the background. And then over on this side, Let's bring the white mat again. Now, the question is, do we want to do just the blue or do I want to triple mat this one too? I know it's a lot extra cardstock when you're triple matting, but to me, it just makes such a big difference. I like that. I like the triple mat. Again, a very skinny mat of the, the um, scarlet. And then I'm going to do a little bit bigger mat of the blue. I could do sapphire, which is a little bit darker. This is like a toned back sapphire, but I think I wanna to keep to this color that we already have that's gonna be on the sides. So I'm going to definitely uh, triple mat these two photos. These are the focal photos. And then as I go, we'll see, I might just do um, a double mat of these ones. We'll see as I play around. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of those mats I talked about, and then we will come back. Okay, so I've matted everything. I've brought in my Versamats to make sure that I can line everything up and also to make sure I stay in screen for you guys. That's always a big issue. So I've matted these in just scarlet. I've done a little bit wider of a mat than on these triple matted ones, just a teeny tiny bit wider. Um, I didn't want it to be overwhelming, um, but I wanted it to definitely pop. Now, I didn't know exactly how I was going to arrange these photos here on the right before starting, but I just kind of played with them. And remember I talked about how I had all this extra space up here. I did end up trimming off half an inch. So this is five and a half inches tall and I still have lots of space up here. So I thought, you know what? I have plenty of space to overlap this photo. And I thought it was very pleasing to the eye to kind of overlap this mat just a little bit since my mat is a lot wider and overlap this photo a bit. And it creates a nice little cluster of photos there. And then over here, I'm pretty much keeping to that title page or the cover page. And then this photo here is pretty much taking the place of some of the embellishments and I'll just embellish a little bit differently. And I'm going to tuck this one under because we've got this wet sign right here that's bright yellow and I just want to cover that so it's not you know blaring and I'm just going to kind of tuck it like this and then we will uh, embellish around here. So now what I'm going to do is 
grab my toffee ink. We're going to do the stamping and I'm going to ink around the edges of everything. And I'm going to start speeding this up because this video is getting quite long and I want to be conscious of your time. Basically for this part, I'm just going to be, you know, taking my foam tool and going along the edges of all of the paper. I don't think I'm going to do the photo mask. I think I'll just do the base paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of those and then we'll get into the stamping and I'll start my voiceover. So I've stamped one side already so I could kind of practice before I teach you. And now I'm going to do the right side. I've used two stamps, one from the Let's Go Anywhere scrapbooking set, which is the one that was used on the featured layout. And then I also used a second one from the Let's Go Anywhere card making stamp set. You could definitely just use this one from the scrapbooking set. One or the other would be fine. And I'm overlapping some of the stamps just a little bit. And then I'm also leaving some spaces. And I found that that is the most pleasing. And then we'll fill in a little bit of those spaces with the other stamp. And then, you know, it's not going to be a super tight, random stamped paper. This is exactly how you would create your own pattern paper. And that's, that's just what we're doing is we're creating our own pattern paper. You can do this with any stamps. I love, love, love using stamps in this way to make a custom paper. And now I'm going to add kind of a distressed look. I added just a teeny tiny bit more ink and kind of blotted it off. And then I'm going over the whole paper with my ink blending tool with mostly the leftover ink that I had from doing all of the inking earlier. And that's it. We have our custom paper that has that distressed look. Now I've glued most of this down off camera, but just wanted to show you, I just put some adhesive in the middle of the photo, leaving the margins around clear so that I have some space to tuck embellishments underneath if I want to. It's always helpful if I have that little extra space, especially when I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Now I have some stamps from both of those stamp sets again. The heart is from the card making stamp and die set, and then the globe and the suitcase are from the scrapbooking sets and I'm stamping them in a couple of different colors because I couldn't decide what colors I wanted. Now the globe is what was used in the inspiration layout but since I have the second page to do as well I also stamped this heart. I thought you know even though it's from the card making stamp set it's quite large and makes a really good embellishment for scrapbook pages too. So I'm stamping it with the toffee first. And since I haven't used these stamps before, I was rubbing them on my hand to season them and stamping them off onto scrap paper. And then I'm going to put it onto my real paper. Now I'm using the light side of toffee and then toffee ink. So it's kind of a tone on tone. The cardstock from close to my heart is two tones. So there's a normal color on one side and a lighter shade of that color on the other. I'll just kind of blot that off on my scrap paper and then I also thought it would be fun to do it in scarlet since it is a heart um, but again I didn't know what color I would need. I'm not going to know until I, until I start doing my embellishment clusters um, what colors I'll use. Isn't it amazing how fast you can die cut when you make a video? <laughs> in reality it takes me so long to die cut. <laughs> it's really fun to be able to use my stamps and dies to create custom embellishments for my scrapbook pages, but it really does take quite a bit of time. So I wanted to add a little bit of extra dimension to these little pieces. So I'm going around the toffee pieces with toffee, the scarlet piece I did with scarlet, and then these sapphire ones I'm going around with sapphire. And then I'm actually kind of going over the middle of each of those pieces, the suitcase and the globe, to kind of add that same distressed look as I did to my background paper. Now I am pulling out all of the stickers that this layout called for and in addition to the ones from the inspiration layout I also pulled out some other little pieces um, that I'll pull in here and there and I took the stick off of the back of all of these stickers with my anti-static pouch. I just dabbed the powder on the back of it. I will link to that down below. I've had some of you ask what exactly it is that I use. I didn't show it in this video, but I've shown it in other videos. And it just helps you to be able to move your stickers around just like they are die cuts, like those ones that I stamped. 
Now these arrows were in the inspiration layout and so I tried them and I do like them but I'm not totally sure about them yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and take those off. I do have a lot of journaling that I want to say and that little tag doesn't give me a lot of space. So I'm thinking that that might be my journaling space down underneath this photo. Now up here, I'm pulling all of the little embellishments that were on my inspiration layout. There are a couple of passports that are stickers. Um, in fact, I think all of those are little stickers and then the black die cut. Okay, so all of those are in place. I have a visual triangle with my clusters on the left hand side. And so now I need to carry it over to the right hand side. Now when you're creating a companion page, maybe you're copying one a single page layout and creating your own second page, or even if you're just creating your own double page layout, the rule of thumb is what you do to one side, you need to do to the other. So I'm basically transferring all of the same colors that I used in each cluster and making sure that I've got each of those colors represented in each cluster, and that helps draw your eye across the page. Now this little passport, I needed a little piece of green, so I cut it out of that passport paper. Um, and then I grabbed a few other little stickers. So just like I'm talking about using the embellishments that, um, you know, the colors and everything that I used on the other side, I also did the exact same thing on the base page that I did on the left page. I just, you know, duplicated that and reversed it over on the right page. Now on below this photo, I thought it needed a little something and I don't necessarily need another title, but I thought that it worked well, Travel With Me, because we were all traveling together and I just thought it was kind of fun, sort of like a subtitle to go under that, fo that photo. And then I pulled some more stickers in the various colors so that I have each of those colors represented as well. Now another little rule of thumb with embellishing is to start with the largest pieces. So when I did each cluster, you might look back and notice that I started with each of the bigger pieces. So that adventure title and the little tag, I started with those. I started with the globe and the world that's in the shape of a heart and that suitcase that are all the bigger pieces. And then I work down to the smaller pieces. So the larger pieces are kind of like your grounding pieces in an embellishing cluster. And then when you work to the smaller pieces, they kind of help support it and layer up on top of them. I tried the arrow stickers again, and although I liked them, I decided to leave them off so I have that extra space for journaling. So let's take a closer look at how this turned out. I love that background paper. It's so pretty. My adventure title, I popped up on thin 3D foam tape, so it's got a little dimension. And I did that because it is the top layer of the cluster, so I had space to pop it up. Looking back, I'm seeing I forgot to add some twine to that journal tag, so I'll go back and do that. And I'll post the final photos over on Instagram and Facebook. If you're not already following me on social media, I will have those links down in the description below, as well as all of the supplies that I used. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I invite you to subscribe and hit that like button so YouTube knows that you enjoyed this video. Here's another scrapbooking video on screen that I think you might enjoy, and I'll see you over there. Bye.